The head coach at Providence, Erin Bath, is here, and she is right on time. Can't wait to talk about all of it with you. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Locked on Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. We are on the women's game Monday through Friday here, past, present, and future, and then Saturday, the WNBA Draft Show. Yes, the 2023 draft has ended. No, it doesn't mean we stop. The 2024 draft and preparations are just beginning. You can read the latest, the big board, of the current prospects available over at thenexthoops.com, where the whole group of us are covering this game every single day, 24-7, over 100 reported pieces every single month. $9 a month, $72 a year. Support the people who are doing this work. And let me tell you about the people doing this work and what they have encountered with Aaron Bath, who is the new head coach of Providence. Everywhere you've gone, coach, you've won. You know, when we when we have our Big Ten coverage and you go see what Michigan did last year with you, when we got the NC State coverage in the ACC and saw the winning you've had there, Clemson legend, I guess my number one question for you is, are you prepared now to have loyalty to the Big East going forward when you've been in all of these <laughs> other major conferences? I am prepared. Yes, I am prepared. I am loyal. I'm here. I'm so excited. Um, no, the Big East, I mean, the conference is ridiculous. It's awesome. One of the best, if not the best in this country, I'm telling you. And I just love the new coaches that are coming in and, you know, all of the 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 new players and even the portal kids coming in. And out. it's really exciting, really exciting. So I am ready, um, blessed to be here and really, really excited, really excited. Okay. I want to talk in segment one about your path getting here, because I think it's really interesting. I think really notable. Segment two, we're going to be talking a lot about digging deep into some of the analytics and the ways in which you intend to play at Providence. But just to start and to give our listeners a sense of it, a an absolute legend at Clemson. You were the first Clemson Tiger to be drafted uh, by the WNBA. You have coached and, again, had... 17 years of experience in coaching everywhere from Georgia state to Liberty to NC state, most recently at Michigan on KBA staff. Yeah. You talked about at your press conference that this was the right time for you to get this head coaching gig. Tell me why you think that is. What was it about now that makes it the right time to make that jump? Yeah, well, see, you know, 17, and thank you for that question, 17 years is, is a long time, but um, all through that journey, you know, I was taking bits and pieces from the coaches, and all the winning really goes down to those head coaches as well, and, and how they've led, and how they've taught us, myself, and my colleagues, the other assistant coaches, and given us an opportunity to grow as well, but um, this right now, this Providence, it's, it's really the college. Um, this was a opportunity when I looked at it, when I met with the uh, athletic director, Steve Knapp, and then just all the support that's here for women's basketball. And then just the good feeling. Sometimes when you know, you know. Mm -hmm. And after that, my great, awesome time with KBA at Michigan and those wonderful women I got a chance to coach, um, she really helped me. And, and, you know, this is it. You can do this. And so it was really um, a mixture of all kind of of just experiences, feelings, uh, prayers that I went, you know, just all kinds. Of, and this was it. It was the right fit. What they were looking for, what the head, what Steve Knapp was looking for in his next head coach, I really feel like I fit the bill. I really did. And I said, you know what? I can do that. Oh, I know about that. And so it was really, um, it was just, it was a no brainer. So it's time. You talk about being the right fit, but, it, you know, it's at a program where in a lot of ways it's been a sleeping giant. And, you know, you go back and you look and you think, and, you know, for me, I, I grew up on the Big East, you know, and so I think about Providence as a college that ought to be a power in women's basketball. 
what is it that you think are kind of the critical ways from an infrastructure perspective that you're set up to win here, especially, you know, in the modern game, which is obviously so different just than it was even a few years ago. Yeah. Well, to set us up to be successful, it really starts with Steve Knapp. His energy and passion for the student athletes and wanting this place to be amazing mm -hmm. is contagious. Um, I want it more than him. Like I'm telling you. So that is one inside, you know, the structure and what hit that's coming from the top, the leadership from the top mm -hmm. is huge. Not having football, I, I will let you know that is actually a big deal when it comes to men's and women's basketball. I mean, we, you know, that we get a lot of support, you know, and I think that's huge. I thought that was a big deal too. Um, and I love the sport, don't get me wrong, I love football, but I do, I did see how we would get a lot of support. Um, not having that and it being women's and men's basketball and, and obviously all the other great sports that are here as well. So I think that's a big deal. Um, I think we check a lot of boxes. Oh my goodness. Providence, the education here. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I just met with it, with the um, admissions council, the, the whole, everyone there. And you gotta, you gotta get your, you gotta be ready <laughs> academically to get into this school. And I think that's amazing. Um, I think the holistic, like, um, wanting to get the student athlete and the students to just holistically get better as a person. Okay. is a big deal to me. Uh, they pay attention to a lot of the outside entities, you know, and the growth of a, of a young person from freshman year to senior year. I think that's a really big deal mm -hmm. because becoming a woman, becoming a man, being ready to take care of yourself, I think is a big deal. Um, so I, I see this, this place being, a, it is a sleeping giant. Um, the facilities here are amazing. Amazing. We're going to get, we're breaking ground to a new locker room and a new off, new offices for women's basketball after this season. So wow. I think that's a really big deal. And the fact that they are willing to put in money to a program that hasn't done, if you will, that great yet, I think is a big deal. Um, they could totally be overlooking us and going to other sports, but they have said, you know what, we're going to make this team, this, you know, get it back to where it needs to be. And so I think that's huge. It's, it, it's hugely significant to me. That is again where the Big East has this advantage, and and I know it starts with Val Ackerman on down. You know, Val who understands the value of basketball, and uh, no no offense to football, but basketball should be uh, number one in my face, in, in my view. And so, you know, from that perspective, to be at a conference where it is where basketball leads the way, it seems to matter, and I think we've even seen that, frankly in the growth of Big East basketball writ large, right? You know, there's this idea that UConn has come in and elevated the lead, and it clearly has, and that clearly yeah. makes a difference to be able to have something uh, to shoot for. But, you know, to be at a program like, like Providence, where you're also competing with Villanova and what Denise Dillon's down there, and, and done down there, and reaching the Sweet 16 this past season, and mm -hmm. crazy the year before, going all the way to the Elite Eight. You know, Marquette is just a consistent power. DePaul and Doug Bruno is self-explanatory. Like, you know, up and down the conference, there is strength there. I know you just came from a couple of places where that really mattered, where the depth of being tested in the Big Ten, which to my mind was the best conference in America this past year, and prior to that at NC State, where the ACC has been obviously hyper-competitive, really makes a difference. Do you think it helps accelerate how quickly you can build to be able to have this type of test on a week-in, week-out basis? A absolutely. You want to play against the best. I mean, that's what I'm recruiting. Come to Providence College, okay, because we are playing against UConn. We are going to compete against DePaul and Villanova. All of those, all of those universities are awesome, yeah. and I do talk about them. Much respect. And so I think that's a good – I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to talk about how good these other teams are. That's great. That's what you want. And if you want to become a pro, you need to be playing, and you need to be tested every night, every night. There should be no rest time. You should be. You should have that feeling in your soul every every evening, and I think that is amazing. Yes, and I do think that is going to spearhead and get us going. Period. So yes, I, I think I, I would love that. I don't want to go and and beat a team by fifty every night. It'd be nice, but I want to play. I want to really, you know, get after it. And um, I think it makes it exciting, and it makes it good for women's basketball. Very good for women's basketball. I want to see it all. I want to see three point shots, everything, getting in the paint, all that good stuff. So, and that, it, it's here in this conference for sure. In this conference, it, it's really exciting. And we're going to get into in segment two a little more about the specifics of 
how you're going to play and uh, and fascinated to get into the nitty gritty of that. First, going to talk to all of you at home about eBay Motors for a championship team. It's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. So when I go back and I look at what uh, style you played at Michigan under KBA, and when you played uh, similar uh, with Westmore and NC State, what, what I see is a few things, right? I see where defense, defense and rebounding, right? But defense is what carries the day. It's not playing at a hyper speed. Uh, you guys are generally between 100 to 150th in pace. Um, and frankly, even uh, when you go back to your time at Liberty, it was a similar thing, although even slower then, but defense carrying the day. Um, you get to create your own system here, obviously, and it's different. So I'm wondering what you're carrying over from those and how much, you know, we'll see things like that and how much you will, you know, kind of putting your own stamp on it. So take me through your thoughts about it. No, I love it. And yes, um, as a player under Jim Davis at Clemson, we were defending mad women. That was it. It really was. We would go against teams that on paper were way better better players and everything, but the, the fundamentals of help side defense and making sure you have ball pressure was is instilled in me. So that is the first thing I'm taking for sure. We are doing that. And that's something we've been working on already this since I've been here. It's just terminology, footwork, the closeouts. Um, I believe last year, last season, the, the women here were working on the pack defense as far as letting the ball go to the middle. Is that makes sense? Well, I force it the other way. I want the ball to go to the corners. So hmm. that's something we're talking about too. So from there, oh, Westmore, NC State, are you kidding me? Defensive guru, offensive guru too. I mean, he's got plays out of the wazoo. So a lot of respect towards him for sure. But he really worked on, you know, ball pressure, but kind of more being in the gaps here and there. And so I'm going to mix it up. I think we'll have two or three main defenses. And then obviously as we go into – scouting there's some hybrid things that we'll have to do to take care of some of these awesome players that we got you know we got to make some tweaks here and there but for the most part that but i will tell you this mm-hmm. michigan we're gonna get on that floor i'm mm-hmm. taking that from kba too those women get on the floor so we have already worked on the toughness part of being playing defense and the physicality and being okay to get a hit and given one if so so mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a mixture of all kinds of things. Um, I do what I would like to press a little bit to slow the ball down just a little bit, nothing too crazy, but just take some time off the clock. Some things we've been thinking about with the team, the women that we have now, mm-hmm. um, we do have some length. Um, so I think we could really benefit in using that. Um, but I do, you know, I, I'm going to take a lot from here and there. And then I, I can't, you know, I, there's so many, so many head coaches I work with. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so amazing. You know, Carrie green at Liberty. What? You know, so he was my post my post position coach at Clemson. I don't know if you knew that or not, but he coached me there. Wow. Yeah, he was my he was a post coach at Clemson when I was a post coach. That was my guy. <laughs> That's my dad. So, you know, he is all about post defense and the footwork and you know, fronting and getting behind. So I'm taking some of that from him. So um yeah, I just want to give too much because we're weeding things, we're mixing things out and our team is not complete. I'm right. still recruiting, so I'm trying to see exactly all the pieces I'll have, but I'm telling you it will start and it will end on defense. I, I, I don't doubt it for a second. And, <laughs> and, and again, you go back to even that Michigan team to, to lose Nas Hillman and for you guys to end up top 30 in the country yeah. in rebounding percentage on the other side of it. It's just an astonishing feat. And again, goes to will as much as it does. to Absolutely. Personnel. I, Absolutely. I, it, it's so interesting though, when you talk about the recruiting piece of this, right? And generally speaking, you know, we we're talking five years ago. You take a job in the spring. I mean, sure, recruiting, right? But you're looking at next year. You're looking at, you know, frankly, class of 25 by the rules of that. 
it's obviously a different scenario with the ability to build and turn around. And we just saw the team that won the national championship had nine new players when they did so. So like, what is that like? You're hitting the ground running, obviously, right away. And what is like a reasonable goal for a number of players and contributors you can bring in here You know, that we're going to see by November? No, that's great. Okay, so reasonable goal is like two out of the portal, to be honest with you. Um, they're all all the kids, that, all the women I'm recruiting right now are coming out of the portal. Right. Um, and so we've got three openings. Uh, we got a commitment the other day. Mm, so excited. So um, there's two more that we're looking. And then I, I really don't love having 15 play a full, full roster because of that. Um, right. You want to have at least one or maybe two open for any kind of movement that may happen. Um, mm -hmm. But it's so interesting you say that because recruiting, like you said, it's, it's totally changed. I mean, you want, I, I would, I want a high school kid to come here her freshman year and to stay. I want her mm -hmm. to start here and change and be different when she graduates. Very important to me. One of my biggest goal, goals, but is it reality? I, I don't know. And that's one thing, you know, and, and so the freedom to be able to leave, is it's kind of rough, you know, but that does hold us coaches accountable, which I'm not mad about to continue to recruit the kids you have and love on them that are here already. So the right. development piece, it puts us in check as coaching and as staffs to make sure the women are becoming women, right? Are getting better and not staying the same. But in the other fact is that they can leave at any time too. So it's really definitely a double edged sword. Um, I do, you know, I, I reasonably back to your question, a, a reasonable goal for me for this, this program right now is to get two, really good portal kids. If I can get sure. three, we're working. Now we're doing mm -hmm. some things. So I'm still, we're still getting after it. That makes sense. It, it makes a ton of sense. And again, you know, to your point about that, I, I would just encourage everyone who's listening here to go watch your intro press conference and oh. what you had to say, because I mean, just the way the listeners, you're going to, want to run through a wall for this coach after you see it, because you talked about not just the basketball side of it, but the building of relationships, the idea that yeah. you're going to be there, that you, that you want to babysit for them someday. I know. I I wish you luck. There's a lot, there's a lot on your <laughs> but, but, you know, to that point, right. Do you feel as if, you know, and it's interesting. We had, uh, Taylor Martell on the show just recently where she was at three different schools over over the course of five years and and the conversation about how you know yes it's changed but does that mean worse it just means different and the other side of that right is building relationships where you're able to have that sort of two-way street do you feel as if you know there'll be let's say more people on the coaching side who are looking at something beyond the four-year window that, you know, that's going to change uh, maybe the quality of personal interactions that we see between players and coaches as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, you've got to, it, it's got to be beyond that. Um, but I, I will say that again, and I don't want to go away from your, your question, but the relationships, it is everything, Howard. It is everything. The way you treat people, it is everything. The way you make someone feel, is everything. That's that's what people remember. And that's the major part of, of recruiting too. And then keeping the kids here and keeping the women here, you know, to to want to fight for you. You've got to be able to fight for them. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's just the way it is. And I think that's, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't, I'm a mom. I will fight for my daughter. I know she knows she's going to go after it for me too. But I still, you know, that that's this, that's just the way it has to be. But I do believe, like you said, yeah, they're going to have to you know, it goes beyond beyond that, way beyond, you know, the, the four years. For sure. it, 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 yes. But fighting for our children is the number one thing we can do for them. Right. I, I, I do also want to talk about broader perspective here and by which I mean black women in coaching and the fact that this is something that it, it's one thing to be talked about, but ultimately it's about making sure that the opportunities are there, making sure that there are recruits coming up who can see leaders who look like them. And I, I just, from that perspective, you know, how important has your path in coaching been for you when you think about not just what it means for you, but it means for the broader sport as a whole and making sure that we resolve these racial disparities that are long overdue to be resolved? 
Yeah, no, it, it means everything. And I will, I, I'm so um, blessed that you asked this question. A lot of people don't even want to mention it or talk about it, but I do believe it's a real thing. And when I took this job, I've had people say, you know, you get one shot. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, okay. But I, I, I need to give some people, some, some people some credit, okay, for where I've been. Most everyone I've ever worked for have been Caucasian or white. It's true. And Coach Davis has never saw a color in his life. He is all he's instilled in us and the women that are on the team is saying, you can be great, but you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to work like hell. You're going to have to work. You have to fight for everything. And so I do give him some credit. I really do. Um, the other women that I see, Don Staley. Oh, my goodness. Um, Joni at, uh, you know, Texas A&M. Those women, uh, they they let my fire. Let's go, you know. And so I, I really been watching them, and and you know, yo, at you know, at uh, Southern, at Ole Miss, just what she's done there. I, I give them a lot of credit, but it is very important that women of color see women of color do well. It is important, and so I am grateful that I am the first. I cannot believe I can say this. I'm not gonna cry, but I am the first black female to be here at Providence College. Are you kidding me? That is the utmost honor I could ever have ever have. And so that makes me start n nervous the most because I really want to do well. I really want to make sure, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm doing it right. And other women of color, other children of color can see me, you know, push and, and, and be successful and get these women to, to feel success and have joy in their journey. And so that's, that's a big deal to me, but, um, yes, it is very necessary. And that's why I give Steve Knapp a lot of credit for hiring myself and Coach English uh, to help lead these programs here at Providence College. And I'm not just saying it because it's just, it is the truth. I am speaking the truth and from my soul. This is something that is huge and I will never take lightly, but it is important that yes, that we have opportunities. And I think there's more coming. It's still, we still got to fight. That's why I love all the new hiring and this, and you know, Tasha at Georgetown. Yes. Phenomenal woman. Billy, Xavier, are you kidding? You know, these women are, let's go. So I am in great company and I'm very grateful and very thankful, but I can't, I've got to give the, the coaches that have helped me along the way, haven't all been of color. They haven't, there's been plenty. Don't get me wrong. I have my, my people don't get me wrong. You know, that have gotten me, but I do want to give them some credit, but you know, Taj Ndungba, who was at, um, just left Georgetown. She's one of my biggest mentors. She's never leave me, you know, um, the head coach at, uh, you know, um, George Mason, she's a beautiful soul who calls me. She's wonderful. So I have to give them a lot of credit too. So I'm going on and on, but this is a very sensitive subject and I'm, I bless you, Howard, for asking. I really appreciate that. It's, really an, it's an important subject and talking about it is one thing, but seeing it happen is yeah. how it really changes. And again, like you said, the onus is not just on women of color to fix this. The onus is on all of us to fix it. So I'm delighted to see it. Well, Thank you. I, I am extremely excited, Coach, to see all that you are doing at Providence and delighted for you to take the time. You know, to our listeners, obviously, want to thank you very much for making us your first listen every day. Come tomorrow, we have another amazing podcast coming your way as we do, again, six days a week, all the coverage over at thenexthoops.com. Coach Aaron Bath, we will be seeing you quite a bit and uh, looking forward to it. So thank you for your time. Until tomorrow, I am Howard McDowell, wishing all of you a wonderful day. Welcome to Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. <laughs>